Hi, a very good morning all of you. I am Lakshmi Narayana Gunta, PGT in Geology at AP Modern School and Junior College Garvanja, Jalamuru Mandal, Sri Kalkalum District. Today, we are going to discuss the first unit in 10th class, Nutrition, the Food Supplying System. Before that, let me ask you, what is nutrition? Why do organisms need to take food? Organisms, they need to take food to get energy. And with that energy, these organisms, they grow and they repair their cells. Okay? And they also perform life processes with this energy. What do you mean by life process? The name itself indicates those processes, those systems, they run in a living organism are called as life processes. Means the nutrition, respiration, digestion, excretion, reproduction, all these are life processes. For all these life processes, we need energy. That energy we get from the food that we take. Okay. Why do organisms need to take food? They need to take food to get energy and to perform life processes. Okay, then what is nutrition? Nutrition is the process by which an organism takes food and utilizes it to get energy. By using this energy, the organisms, they grow in size, they repair the damaged cells and this energy it is used for the maintenance of our body. Okay, then what are nutrients? Nutrients are the materials which provide nutrition to living organisms. The materials which provide nutrition to living organisms are called as nutrients. Okay, the examples for these nutrients, they are proteins, carbohydrates, fats, etc. Okay, vitamins. Okay, no? and these nutrients, they are broadly classified into two types based on the quantity that is required. Okay. If they are required by our body in larger quantities, they are called as macronutrients. If they are required by our body in trace amounts or smaller quantities, they are called as micronutrients. Here, you can observe the micronutrients. The examples are vitamins, minerals and uh, trace elements like zinc, magnesium, iron, etc. Okay, they are called as micronutrients. Even though they are required by our body in trace amounts, their effect is greater. Okay, suppose vitamins. Take for an example vitamin A, which is rich in carrots, liver oils, etc. Okay, this if this vitamin A is deficient, we may lose our eyesight. Okay, and that much of importance these micronutrients have. They are responsible for maintenance of the body. They are responsible for keeping us healthy. And they are responsible for protecting our body. What, uh, what do you mean by macronutrients? Macronutrients, they are required by our body in large quantities. Proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, they are called as the macronutrients. Means, if we take rice it is rich in carbohydrates if we take meat or eggs they are rich in proteins if we take butter cheese they are rich in fats okay all these are they are responsible for running our body they are responsible for maintaining our body okay nutrients they are broadly classified into two types micronutrients macronutrients Micronutrients, they are required by our body in trace amounts, whereas macronutrients, they are required by our, our body in larger quantities. Okay, macro means large scale, larger scale. They are required by our body in large scale. Okay, and the nutrition, it is broadly divided into two types. Autotrophic nutrition, heterotrophic nutrition. Autotrophs, auto means self. Trophos, trophos means Feed means these organisms they feed themselves. They feed themselves. Whereas heterotrophs they depend upon other organisms for their nutrition. Means they obtain energy through intake and digestion of organic substances, particularly the plant tissues or by taking animal tissues, they obtain 
energy. Whereas these autotrophs, they synthesize their own food. The best examples for these autotrophs are plants. Okay. The examples for heterotrophs are animals, human beings, all these are heterotrophs. Okay, whereas this heterotrophic nutrition, it is further divided into three types. The aprophytic nutrition, parasitic nutrition, and holozoic nutrition. This first one, the saprophytic nutrition. The saprophytic nutrition is a mode of nutrition where the organisms they depend upon the dead and decaying matter for their nourishment. The examples include fungi, yeast, etc. Okay. Whereas the parasitic nutrition, it is a mode of nutrition where one organism it obtains energy at the expense of Another organism means in simple terms, these organisms, these parasites, they live in or live on other organisms for their food. Example, head louse is, a ecto, is an ectoparasite means this head louse, it depends upon our blood. Here, the head louse is a parasite. We, the humans, they are the hosts, okay, means here one is benefited, the parasite is benefited, the host is somewhat lost. That means it is a plus minus relation. Okay. And where is the third one, third type of nutrition is holozoic nutrition. Holo means total. Here in this type of nutrition, the organisms, they obtain their nutrition by taking in solid or liquid food and there in the digestive tract, the food is digested. After completion of the digestion, the food is sent into the blood, which is called as absorption. The food which is sent into the blood is supplied to each and every cell in the body, which is called as the assimilation. Okay. And this type of nutrition is called as holozoic nutrition. Okay. Nutrition is divided into autotrophic nutrition, heterotrophic nutrition, autotrophic nutrition. The examples are plants. The heterotrophic nutrition, it is further divided into uh, saprophytic nutrition, parasitic nutrition and the holozoic nutrition. Saprophytic nutrition, the examples are fungi and yeast. Parasitic nutrition, the plasmodium vivax, cascuta. Cascuta is a plant. Even though it is a plant, it is a parasite. Generally, plants are autotrophs. Okay, but this coscuta plant, as it is not having chlorophyll, the photosynthetic pigment, it cannot synthesize its own food. That's why it depends upon it depends upon other plants uh, for its nourishment. Okay, plasmodium, which lives inside the human body, and it causes malaria fever. And this holozoic nutrition, the examples are man, dog amoeba etc okay this holo what happens in this holozoic nutrition a liquid or solid food is taken into the body and it is digested inside the body and after digestion it is absorbed into the body after absorption it is assimilated in, into the cells okay means the food is digested first what do you mean by digestion the process of conversion of complex food substances into their simple absorbable forms is called as digestion. This digestion involves both mechanical and chemical processes. What do you mean by mechanical process? What do you mean by chemical process? We will discuss. Okay, let me discuss the first thing. What are complex food substances? What are these simple absorbable forms? Let us discuss. Now, suppose if we take rice, it is rich in carbohydrates. These carbohydrates, they are not absorbed into the blood unless they are converted into their simple and absorbable forms. Those are the glucoses. Means these carbohydrates, they have to be broken down and they have to be converted into the smallest forms. Those are the glucoses. Then only these carbohydrates, these complex carbohydrates, they are absorbed into the body when they are converted into these simple absorbable forms. Similarly, proteins, they are made up of these amino acids. Okay. And these proteins, they have to be broken down into smallest particles, that is the amino acids. 
these amino acids then only they provide us energy and similarly fats they are the complex food substances and they are converted into fatty acids and glycerol okay means these carbohydrates they are converted into glucose proteins they are converted into simple absorbable forms that is amino acids fats the complex food substances they are converted into the simple absorbable forms that is the fatty acids and the glycerol okay this is the process of digestion conversion of complex food substances into their simple absorbable forms is called as digestion okay and let us discuss the overview of digestion the human digestive system consists of alimentary canal and the digestive glands the alimentary canal is a long tube measuring about 8 to 10 meters in length and it starts with the mouth and ends with the anus okay what are there in the alimentary canal the mouth and buccal cavity is the first part of the alimentary canal the pharynx followed by the esophagus followed by the stomach followed by small intestine and the large intestine so the small intestine is also called as small bowel large intestine is also called as large bowel okay these are the parts in alimentary canal and what are there in the digestive glands the digestive glands they include the gastric glands which are present inside the stomach okay these are the gastric glands which are present inside the in the wall of the stomach which produce a juice called as gastric juice and similarly intestinal glands which are present in the walls of the intestine walls of the intestine they produce another juice called as intestinal juice this intestinal juice is also called as the sucus entericus entericus means related to intestine as this juice it is secreted by the walls of the intestine it is called as sucus entericus most important thing sucus entericus and coming to the next one the salivary glands these are the salivary glands there are three pairs of salivary glands which produce a juice called as saliva we will discuss it later in detail okay and these salivary glands they pour the secretion into the buccal cavity and the secretion is called as the saliva okay and the next one is the liver which produces the bile juice bile juice and the last one is the pancreas which produces pancreatic juice pancreas produces pancreatic juice okay we will discuss in our next session very clearly all these things okay uh, thank you for watching follow me on youtube simply by typing lakshmi narayana gunta okay